Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. So I'm gonna do an update on my state of the market series. Um, market has done well since bottoming in October. Last week we had some really good indications uh, because for a long time, good news was bad and bad news was good. Meaning if we, you know, cause the market is obsessed with rates, that's the number one uh, item on its list. And so if we would get good news, the market would sell off because that means rates would be kept higher for a longer period of time. And if we got bad news, the market would actually rally because that meant the Fed could possibly back off on rate hikes uh, earlier. So good news is bad news, bad news is good news, but things changed last week, uh, which was nice to see. Powell spoke, he talked about the possibility of tapering rates sooner rather than later. Uh, that doesn't mean rates are going to come down. It doesn't mean rates are going to be held steady. It just means that instead of raising 75 basis points, they might only raise 50. Uh, that was great news. The market received it well. The market posted a huge gain. Then we got pretty good news Friday morning before the open. The employment numbers were released. On the surface, they looked very good. In the past, if this would have happened over the summer, the market would have tanked because good news with employment means... Uh, robust economy, which means the Fed needs to keep hiking rates, maybe even uh, hike them faster and by a greater amount. This time, the good news caused the market to gap down, but then we rallied. So that was a, we rallied, we didn't get back to positive, but we rallied back to basically, you know, just being down a little bit. So over the summer, that would have been, the market would have tanked. Last week, didn't happen. So we're starting to get a change in character out there. All right, so let's, in this video, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to show some indexes. I'm going to do the monthly, weekly, and daily of the S&P. Then I'm going to talk about uh, a handful of indicators just to give you an idea of what the current state of the market is. Before I start, quick reminder, this is your last chance to take us up on our Cyber Week special. Buy an annual membership at Lever Brothers. Get three months free. Uh, to take it, just go to leverbrothers.com. Click subscribe in the top navigation. You could subscribe there and uh, we will manually add on three extra months. All right, let's get started here. All right, here is the S&P 500 monthly chart going back 10, 11 years. Uh, just going to point out a few things. There are two moving averages on this chart. One is the 10, one is the 50. You can see both are significant. Uh, 50 was support here, a little bit sloppy. 50 support there, 50 was support here. Uh, I'm kind of willing to look past the virus because it was a sudden event that happened really fast and then it didn't go away really fast, but the Fed came in and did some stuff. Uh, so I'm not really looking at that. And then we got support here. So the 50 has been support numerous times over the last decade. Uh, and it, it worked again this time. So if we do get a pullback, we do get a double bottom, it's going to happen somewhere close to the 50. It'll be something to look out for. If we if the 50 doesn't hold, then uh, that has pretty negative implications. As far as the 10 goes, when the S&P gets above the monthly 10, it usually bodes pretty well. Okay, Even though it's only a, a shorter moving average, uh, the market tends to do pretty well afterwards. So if you go back over here to 2011, I'm going to circle it here. When the S&P first gets above the 10, Okay, it moves up, came down, tested, moved up, came down, tested, and trended up. So from, from the 2011 dip, from the time it got above the 10, it never closed above the 10 again, all the way until 2015. So once it got above, it spent you know more than three years above the 10. Right over here, it got back above the 10 after dipping. It had one more dip, and then it got above the 10 here. And then once again, it spent more than two years above the 10. So once it got above the 10, it was, wasn't always clear sailing. You know, we had a couple months here where it moved sideways, but once it got above the 10, it didn't close above the, close below the 10 for, for a couple years. We got, you know, the dip in the end of 2018, it got above the 10 here. There was some back and forth movement here, but then it rallied up for not a year, but uh, looks like about seven, eight months. That wasn't bad. I'm going to ignore the when the virus broke out and just move to today because the the mark the S&P just closed above the 10. So it's just something to watch out for when you look back a decade when we've closed above the 10 more times than not the market trended up. It wasn't always smooth sailing. Sometimes there was a couple months where it moved sideways, but in almost all cases an uptrend did begin. 
Okay, here is the weekly chart. Um, so we got a big move off the March 2020 low all the way up until the high earlier this year. Uh, a couple things I want to point out. We got rejected by the 50 there and we're coming up to the 50 there. So a couple things, just one thing to keep in mind or a couple things to keep in mind is we've had a nice run. We've had, you know, a lot of good trades. Um, breath is good. Participation is good. Um, we've had... Uh, we've had um, a lot of good trades to be had, but given the run off the low, given the fact that we're close to the um, close to the 50 moving average, we got to be a little bit more be be mindful of that. I can also draw a trend line in here connecting the tops, and we're pretty much right there. Okay, so biases to the long side. I'm optimistic things are getting better. There seems to be like a character shift going on, but. We're up against the potential resistance in the form of a downsloping trend line and the 50-week moving average, so we have to be mindful of that. Uh, and um, just note if things stop, if if things stop working, if we stop getting follow through, then uh, we don't want to ignore that. Another thing is like even if this thing pops up, we're probably going to come back down and test something before we continue up. So there there shouldn't be any FOMO. Play the good ones, uh, but don't chase because you will get second chances. Okay, here is the daily chart going back about th uh, 13 months. You can see up and down, up and down, up and down within uh, you know, within the last year. I can connect the highs here like so. I can connect the lows. So we've been in a downsloping channel. So overall, we're still in a downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows, going back more than a year. Um, we are doing battle with the trend line. We're also doing battle with the 50-day moving average, which rejected the index here, and we're you know we're right there now. We moved above it last Wednesday. It lost it on Thursday, or it held it. It, it tested on Thursday and then tested again on Friday. So just something to keep in mind. We've had a nice run off the low, but you know this is not a time that you want to like chase subpar trading setups, okay? Res you know, in the near term, my bias is to the upside, but overall respect the fact that there still is a downtrend in place. All right, let's look at a few more. All right, so the market is completely obsessed with rates. Okay? We know this if uh, you know, so what we have here is the SP 500 up top, the 10-year yield down below. So if I look over here, uh, let me box this in. So here's, um, you see down below here, this is when rates declined and you can see what happened to the S&P 500. It moved up, moved sideways, and then moved up. So when rates were declining, the S&P moved up. Same thing happened here. Rates moved down for a few weeks. S&P chopped around a little bit, but then eventually moved up. So we fast forward over to today. Whoops. Fast forward over to today and you have, you know, rates moving down since basically mid, you know, third week in October and the market has been moving up. So right now, rates are moving down. That's great to see. That's what Wall Street wants. And as long as that continues, uh, the market should be in good shape. If, if this reverses up here, um, be careful. Make sure you have stops in place. You don't want to fight it. Next up, U.S. dollar. Um, with the dollar, the best thing for the dollar is to, you know, for, for it to be somewhere comfortably in the middle. You don't want it to be too high. You don't want it to be too low. Just something comfortably in the middle where nobody really is adversely affected. You know, the market topped in mid-August, and that's right when the U.S. dollar um, bottomed. And as the dollar moved up for a couple months, the market moved down. The market then bottomed in October and has been rallying since. So the dollar and the market have been moving exactly opposite each other for the last three plus months. So it's something to keep in mind. As long as the dollar is weak, the market should do okay. If the market, if the dollar starts firming up, uh, again, we gotta be careful. All right, let's get into some, some, some breath indicators here. So what we have here is the S&P 500 up top and we have the NYSE AD line. We have the 10, 20, and 50 of the AD line, okay? Divergences work, especially with the, you know, with the, the the, t the 10 and the 20, you can see lower, you know, if I, looking left on the chart, we got a lower low here, higher low here. What does the market do? It stalled for a little bit, but then it bounced. We had a lower high, lower low there, higher low there. What the market do? It bounced, okay? It's only a 10-day moving average here, so the bounces don't have to be huge, but that you tend to get a reversal soon after. It tells you when the participation rate is not 
in sync with what the uh, market is doing. So right now, we do have a slight divergence in place. Okay, the market was you know printed here, and the AD line was here, and then we did a higher high here, but we had a lower high here, and then we had another higher high here, and we have a lower high here. So a slight divergence, not huge. It's impressive that the indicator stayed above zero for about five, six weeks, but we do have a little bit of a, uh, a divergence in place. We have to be aware that maybe in the near term we need to work that off. Okay, same divergence is playing out with a 20, and the 50, as you can see, has been nicely trending up. So it's, it looks good. But let's not get lazy here because the same thing happened in August. Okay, in August we had, you know, this moved up. It actually took out the high here. We had high prints here, high prints here. The 50 was above zero. Um, so everything was looking good. So we can't, you know, and then what happened is that the, the market just turned right around and went down. So overall, I'd say I'm impressed that we have some, you know, good prints above zero, near term, intermediate term, longer term. Uh, everything is supported. Okay, but we can't get lazy with trade management because, um, you know, overall we're still in a bear market. All right, here's the breath thrust, which is the 10-day exponential moving average of the advancing volume versus the total volume at the NYSE. Uh, um, divergences work great here. Okay, I don't, I don't have, I don't, I don't have to go into these. You guys know what they are. We got lower low here, higher low here. What happened? The market um, stalled for a little bit, but then eventually bounced. Same thing. Ha it's the same thing has happened over and over. It's like almost like every month, every two months, we get a divergence that calls a turning point. The turning point doesn't have to be a permanent turning point. It just means that whatever's going on in the market is not being supported by volume, and there there tends to be some sort of correction. Okay, we had a little bit of a divergence forming right here. Okay, and what we got is we got now let me get what we got here is we got sideways movement here. Okay, that worked off part of the divergence. Now the breadth indicator matches previous high and has basically just been trading sideways for about five, six weeks. So it looks good. Um, it's just something to keep in, mind, keep in mind. As long as it stays above like 0.4 on a dip, the market's in good shape. Okay, because oftentimes it's the absence of big down moves that gives us the most uh, important information, not the big spikes to the upside. So, so far so good. It's impressive that we're getting you know steady prints up at this level, um, and as long as we you know, as long as we can stay above 0 0.4 on a dip, the market should be in good shape. All right, we have this is uh, SP 500 up top. Down below is the Russell 3000 number of Rus or the percentage of Russell 3000 stocks above their 20-day moving average. Again, participation is good, but we got a little bit of a divergence here, as you can see. Um, you know, each of these successive highs, high, high. You know, another high, but we have you know less you know less stocks here above their 20, and then even less stocks above their 20 here. So, in the, you know overall, the market's trending lower. We know that there's a, a you know down sloping channel. In the near term, we're trending up, but we're starting to get to the point where it's like all right, we have a little bit of a breath um, breath weakness going on. Not weakness, but it's weakening. Plus, we're going up against some key moving averages on uh, the weekly and daily time frame. So it's something to keep in mind. Here's Russell 3000 stocks uh, above the 50 day moving average. So what we have here is we have a really good print. So we have like 78% of stocks are above their 50. That's great, okay? But again, we can't get lazy because in a downtrend, um, in a downtrend, you know, high prints are normal because you have, you know, good rallies uh, that go, you know, that can go for several weeks or a couple months. So you get high prints, everyone gets lured in, and then you get, you go back down to the lows. So what I want to see here is at some point in time, we're going to get a dip. The dip could take place right now, or we could shoot higher and then we get a dip after that. So what I want to see is when we do get a dip, as long as the, this can, this could correct down to like 40 or so, but as long as it doesn't go much below that, the market will be in good shape. The market should lag up, okay? It's it's the absence of low prints that tells us the market is gaining health, okay? So right now, we're not being told too much. Um, it's when the market dips again is when valuable information will be revealed. All right, now we have SP500 up top, and we have the, the Russell 3000 one-month high-low. So how many stocks are uh, printing a one-month high versus a one-month low? Another little divergence is forming. The market's been trending up, higher highs, higher lows, just kind of stair-stepping up. But we have less stocks forming, 
less stocks ticking, uh, ticking new highs versus new lows looking back one month. So it's just a little bit of a divergence that we should be aware of. Um, they, they tend to call short-term turning points that, you know, at the very least, we'll get some sideways movement, but we p could get a, a price correction too, something to keep in mind. Um, overall, this has been impressive because we spent about five, six, seven weeks with this indicator mostly above zero, but it does seem like there's a little bit of less participation on this most recent move up. It's something to, you know, to watch out for, especially if you remember like the, you know, the daily and weekly charts where it uh, showed the trend line downslope. And so when you move up to a resistance level and breath is starting to weaken, you got to be aware of it. All right, next up, last chart, S &P, this is S&P 500 up top, and this is the three-month high-low of the Russell 3000, okay? So, you know, similar thing here. Um, it's, it's good that we have nice prints here. The one thing I'm going to be looking for uh, when we do get a dip, and again, it could happen soon right now, and then we could try to rally. We could push higher and then get a dip. At some point in time, we're going to get a dip. When that dip happens, if we get a move to minus 500 and then we bounce, that's fantastic, okay? That would be ideal situation. It's okay to get a drop to minus 500. What we don't want is we don't want to move to minus 1,000, okay? We're allowed to have prints above zero with an occasional dip to five minus 500 and then prints above zero. You get a lot of prints above zero and then a dip to minus 500 and then prints above zero and then a dip to minus 500. That's actually, that's perfect. That's what you want. You don't want dips down to a thousand like we have here and here and here and stuff. Okay. It's the absence of the low prints that tells us the market's um, strengthening. So we're going to get a lot of information on the next dip. Okay. So overall, I, can, I still consider the trend to be down. We got higher, you know, lower highs, lower lows in place. The market's been trending down in a channel. The, we, the, the weekly and the daily charts are going up against some key moving averages. Breath is starting to weaken in the near term. Okay, so I'm optimistic the market's going to move higher over, you know, over the next few weeks, month or so. But in the very near term, I could see a little bit of a little bit of a pullback, maybe some sideways movement to work off some of these uh, breath divergences that are forming. All right, hope you got something out of this. Remember, you can subscribe to our um, service at leverbrothers.com. Um, we got our Cyber Week special, special. It's the only time we do it per year, so check it out. Good luck, and I will see you next time.